Hi, and my name is Luke Briner, and I want to show you how I'm going to install a solar panel. Now, one of the things, like you, hopefully, is that I'm interested in alternative energy sources and the idea of getting energy for free. And where better to get that energy from than the sun? They reckon there's about a kilowatt per square meter, potentially, of energy from the sun that's available. So I've bought a solar hot water panel and I want to install it in order to heat my hot water system. So how far am I so far? A few years ago, I bought one of these, a very large multiple coil hot water cylinder. Now this is quite a big unit from Navatron, that stands at about two meters tall. And this unit actually has three coils built into it. I'll see if I can get in there to show you. So in this cylinder, the top coil, which is, that's the inlet to the top coil. That there is, is the outlet. Um, and that's connected currently to my combi boiler. I then have a second coil here, which is also pumped. And that's the return for the second coil. And I have that connected to a wood burner downstairs. But immediately underneath you see there is a third coil and that's on 15 millimeter copper and that's where I'm going to fit my solar water panel. Now one of the things that I've found is when trying to design the system the information on the internet is very spotty it's very hard to work out exactly what's what and it's not really helped by the fact that the manufacturers seem to not have very much information about their technology whereas there are lots and lots of DIY sites and people living off the grid and all kinds of like different designs different cost um, levels and basically it can be really confusing to know how all of this stuff actually connects together so let's look at the main components here obviously I have a solar collector that's downstairs in my living room in boxes and that's obviously the, the main component for the solar hot water system. But what else do we have here? So these three components are basically a pressure vessel, the mounting bracket for it, and a flexible hose to connect it into the system. And one of the things that you might or might not know is that the pressures in any uh, hot water system basically can, can, reach, can go up quite high. And you'll even know that probably in your combi boiler you'll have a pressure vessel so that when the water in the system heats up that there's actually some flexibility inside for the fluid to expand into otherwise what would happen is the pressure across all the pipe and the fittings would increase and potentially damage something so that's no different in the solar system we still have hot water it's still going to expand but significantly the temperatures and pressures involved in solar hot water can be much greater than they are in your normal combi boiler system. So for instance, this is a solar, uh, a solar pressure vessel, and you'll notice here that it's actually rated up to 130 degrees Celsius. So be careful, you might have a normal hot water um, pressure vessel that's only rated up to 90 or 100 degrees. So you really need a solar one, otherwise you can end up perishing the rubber inside it and getting a pressure vessel failure. Um, this one here, you can see that the nominal pressure for the system is between two and two and a half bar. But you'll notice also that the test pressure um, is 12 bar and it's actually rated up to eight. So again, this is a pressure vessel that can take the potentially large pressures. And the reason that happens is when the water's not moving um, in the panel for whatever reason, you can probably imagine that sitting in direct sunlight um, you can get temperatures exceeding even 200 degrees Celsius, which will cause a massive pressure increase. And if that pressure's got nowhere to go, again, it's going to just find the weakest thing um, that's going to break. It will break, and obviously everything's going to leak out everywhere. This is my pumping station. So in most cases, you might decide to build your own one of these. I just thought it was easier to buy one ready-made because it has various things on it which I'm going to need to incorporate anyway and I thought it kind of made sense to pay a bit extra money and have one of these pre-built so if we look at these things uh, ignore these they're just um, fittings that you can use to connect um, onto these bits here so 
they're stuck into the polystyrene. So here we have um, a filling in inlet and the return outlet and we'll talk about filling the system later but basically that's the way that you get into your system to fill it with fluid. Here we have a little flow meter which again is a useful um, device to work out with your systems working properly especially when you first turn it on um, and you're not quite sure necessarily where, uh, whether everything is working. And here is a little ball valve and that's used for when you're filling when you turn that it will close this off and it will allow the fluid to go out there come in here and bypass the flow meter so that's what that is obviously a pump um, again needs to be rated for the sorts of temperatures that you're talking about so in this case you can see that this is actually a solar type pump um, and I think that's rated at 180 degrees Celsius because again the, the water inside as you can imagine can get very very hot so again be careful about using your own stuff you might find a cheaper pump at screw fix or something but if it's not rated for the temperature involved then probably what will happen is the pump will end up overheating and it will burn out and you have to replace it anyway so um, be wary of temperature ratings of that we then have a just a, a temperature dial which again just for kind of convenience and here is then a couple of things one of them is just a pressure dial so that enables you to fill it fill the system and know um, what the pressure is at any given point but also on top of that is a pressure relief valve um, absolutely essential for any hot, um, hot water system that's unvented is a, a place for all of the water to get dumped if the pressure exceeds a certain amount and in this case that one's preset um, probably to about four bar I would imagine and in the outside you can see there's a socket um, which is the outlet of that and then the connection on the bottom there is just a convenience connection for the expansion vessel so all of that's built into kind of one unit which I need to screw on the wall somewhere and then a couple of other fittings first of all just a simple non-return valve they call this an anti-siphon valve, but the basic idea is if it's, say, night time, your cylinder's very hot because it's been heated up all day, and then outside the temperature might only be, let's say, 15 degrees, 10 degrees Celsius, what you don't want is the, the hot water in the tank siphoning back up the, the feed pipe to the solar collector and losing the heat that way. So that's just a, a one-way valve, a check valve that will allow water to go into the top of the coil but not return back the other way. Uh, another thing that comes with the Navitron kit is one of these very large um, spy Spirotech um, de-aerators. And this is kind of like a, an automatic air vent that you have on your radiator system where if we look, probably can see it in there, there's basically a set of gauze inside of that and the, the water, the fluid passes through that picks out air bubbles which travel up the body um, and then they're vented out the top here again it's a solar rated device don't use um, standard automatic vents <clears throat> because again all of the the rubber and kind of stuff that they use in those um, is not designed um, for solar temperatures and even some of the high temperature ones I've seen only really have ratings up to about 150 degrees Celsius which might be okay but again if you've just got even a few days of temperatures exceeding that what you don't want is for your automatic vent to start spitting out um, fluid with antifreeze in it and then the last component I've got here is really just a plastic tank um, it's not particularly interesting but on the top we just have a kind of push fit hole for a 22 mil pipe which is going to go in there something in German which I'm guessing is um, fill hole or something like that or filling point um, which you can put your gl your glycol and that kind of stuff into then your water into there and then we have a little tap at the bottom where on the sides that's your kind of half inch outlet uh, and I'm not sure what that bit is on the bottom yet I think it's just a screw in order to drain stuff out so there are really the, the main components of the system um, it kind of seems uh, a bit kind of tricky even at this stage for me because I'm having to kind of design this system a little bit by myself if you if you know a helpful plumber 
by all means talk to them but but be aware if you don't really know what you're talking about which um, I kind of half do um, there's always a chance that the people you talk to might give you very confident advice but if they've not actually done this stuff before professionally they might not really be aware of the things that are different between this and say a normal hot water system or central heating system so for instance you really have to use compression fittings um, onto the collector certainly at the top end of the system where the temperatures get, will get the hottest I've heard about um, solder fittings melting um, under some of the temperatures so again a, a, an inexperienced plumber might not realize that so you really need to stick with compression and in fact the Navitron kit comes with compression fittings for the collector end of things and then I've got this twin sole which basically twin solar pipe that's insulated um, and again they're compression nuts um, on the end so down the bottom end of the system here by the coil where this part's going to be um, the temperature shouldn't get quite as hot but again if you're only putting a few fittings just buy some compression ones and then you won't have any sleepless nights scared that uh, something's going to pop open and, and drop water all over your house um, the other thing is obviously you got a bottle of this stuff this is just the um, Navitron heat transfer fluid again I think for the kind of money it's a little maybe a little bit more than something you might find in a garage or a Halfords or something but again knowing that you're getting the right stuff um, is really important I've heard about um, antifreeze clogging up in a system and causing the system to basically get virtually destroyed and need replacing so for that extra five ten quid whatever it might cost to me it's just not worth um, the extra economy I've spent probably about a thousand pounds on all of this including the collector and all of these parts um, and, and the pipe and stuff like that so for want of another hundred or hundred and fifty pounds just making sure I'm getting the right parts uh, just it seems to make sense to me so I've kind of got this I'll talk about the filling in a minute but the initial kind of question is apart from the system design which you might or might not already have done is like where is this going to go so I've got my airing cupboard I've already taken out a shelf that I'd built in before so I had one of these shelves up there where the holes are and what I've realized is you know I'm a neat person I like it to be neat I'm trying to find out where it's going to fit but to be honest with an expansion vessel and a tank that's not going to be enough room I could possibly just about cram it in but there's no point what I need to do is I need to take out these extra shelves move all of this stuff out of the way for the time being give myself plenty of space to play with um, get the stuff put in tested commissioned um, and then once I've done that got the pipes in and everything else I can then work out um, where to put my shelves back in or how to do that so again let's um, you know just make you make your life easier by giving yourself plenty of room the other thing is I'm gonna hire a scaffold tower at some point to um, put the solar collector up on the roof and I don't want to be hiring it for a week or two if I can do it in a day that's ideal so really what I want to be doing is getting all of this stuff in installed um, with all of the pieces all correct all in place ready to go so then ideally I can hire the scaffold tower for a day, get the panel up, connect it up, up the top, and then be ready to, to try it all out. Uh, you know, So don't be tempted to put the solar collector on first. And again, don't be tempted, in my opinion, um, to try and save a bit of money by doing it off of ladders or anything else stupid like that. Because honestly, it's just not worth the risk. People die every year falling off of roofs. They don't mean to. They just slip on stuff. They slip on broken tiles, whatever. And even smaller injuries, like a friend of mine twisted his ankle, pulled his ligaments, uh, and he's off work for six weeks just by getting off a ladder the wrong way. So, you know, be careful with that kind of stuff. It isn't really worth the, you know, saving a hundred pounds to give yourself a, a life-threatening injury is really not worth it. So, um, I'm going to take out these shelves, and then once I've done that, once I've cleared some space, then we'll look at what we're going to do next. <laughs> 